In July 1981, Karen Price, also known as Little Miss Nobody, disappeared. For years, no one was looking for her until she was discovered. Turns out, she had been brutally killed. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel where we talk about real crimes and real people. This is the killing of Karen Price. Wanna know what happened? Let's get started. There isn't much information on Karen, but it's assumed she had a difficult short life. She had a troubled background. She didn't have a stable home. Karen was placed in the care system at the age of 10 and she would often run away. So when she disappeared, it didn't cause many concerns, but she never returned. At the time of her disappearance, Karen was 15 years old. She was living at a local authority assessment center, Mais Year Eglis in Pontypridd. When Karen ran away, she would have sex for money to make hens meet. In July 1981, Karen and another girl, who was just 13 at the time, went to a flat at 29 Fitzhamon Embankment, Cardiff in Wales. They sniffed glue. On that day, the two went in that flat and only one of them came out. Karen Price wasn't seen alive ever again. She was nowhere to be found for years. And those who knew her thought she had run away and would come back. She never did. And no one said anything. On December 7, 1989, some men who were working digging the back garden of 29 Fitzhamon Embankment in Cardiff dug up skeleton remains wrapped in a carpet tied with electric flax. There was a plastic bag over the head. There were clothing items and the hands were tied behind the back with flex. Several efforts were made to identify the person who had been found. The skeleton belonged to a young female. Entomologist concluded the girl had been dead for at least 10 years. A facial reconstruction artist did a reconstruction of the skull. The result was published in the hopes of getting some tips from the public. There were several contacts which stated girl was Karen Price. DNA samples led to identification of Karen by her parents. Early 90s, the police was approached by a woman. At the time of Karen's disappearance, she was just 13 years old. The woman known as Dee also stayed at the same center as Karen Price, May's ear Eglis. Dee often ran away like Karen, but they never ran away together. Dee and Karen didn't know each other, but they would hang around with the same people whom they sniffed glue with. Dee would also have sex with men to make money. One of those men was Alan Charlton. Alan Charlton, who was 21 years old in 1981, lived in a basement flat at 29 Fitzhamon in Bateman, Cardiff. Dee met Alan. He was a doorman. She had sex with him at his flat once. A week later, they went back to the same room. Alan asked Dee to act a certain way, but she didn't. So Alan cut her leg with a penknife. Alan also wanted to be Dee's pimp. Dee's pimp was Idris Ali, who was 16 years old at the time. Idris Ali also knew Karen Price from school. Even though Idris didn't force or let Karen or Dee to prostitution, eventually the two girls would give him a portion of their earnings because he was a friend of theirs. On July 1981, Dee and Karen Price went to Alan Charlton's flat with Idris Ali. They sniffed glue and then Alan asked Dee and Karen to pose naked on the bed. Dee refused and Alan slapped her. Karen tried to defend Dee. Alan slapped and punched Karen until she fell. Idris tried to pull Alan off but Alan kept punching Karen. When Alan stopped, there was blood from Karen's mouth and Karen was unresponsive. Alan then said Karen was dead. He put her on the bed. He went out and returned with a white curtain wire. He turned Karen over. He tied her hands and put a bag over her head. He took her pants off and assaulted her. He told Idris to do the same. Idris didn't want to, but he did it. He was scared. Alan then brought a carpet. Idris and Alan lifted Karen and put her on the rug. Then they went outside. Eventually, when they returned, they had dirty hands. Alan told Dee not to say anything or she would die the same way. Idris advised her to say nothing. He was scared 
as she was. She didn't tell anyone and she never saw Alan or Idris again. From this point forward, the police had two names of the individuals who were allegedly might have been involved in the brutal killing of Karen Price. From February 16, 1991 onwards, Idris Ali gave a series of interviews and in each of them, he had a different story of what had happened. All of these versions were nothing but an attempt to remove any accountability of what had happened. He started with, it was all consensual. They all sniffed glue, did drugs, and had sex. He mentioned D, but he didn't say anything about Karen's death. Then there was another version. He knew the girls. They all went to a sex party at Alan's flat. The police confronted him with D's statement. Then he admitted he held Karen's hand while Alan strangled her. Idris Ali and Alan Charlton were arrested on February 23, 1991. Alan simply denied having anything to do with Karen's death. On the other hand, Idris Ali kept changing his story. His next version was, Dee told him Karen was being held captive. He went there. Karen was on the bed. Alan jumped on her and strangled her. Alan punched Idris and made him hold Karen's hands. They put the body in the cupboard for four days, then they buried her. Later on, his wife told him to tell the truth, so he said he was scared of Alan. As he kept changing his stories, he also stated Dee was also involved in the killing and burial of Karen Price. He stated he and Alan were innocent and he had never met Alan Charlton. Then he did a U-turn. He returned to his early admissions. Dee's version of the events were accurate, but he didn't have sex with Karen. Then he stated Alan forced him to kill Karen. He put his hands around Karen's throat and squeezed. Karen's hands were tied behind her back. He cut her cheek. D also cut Karen and both of them had been forced by Alan. There was no carpet. There was no curtain wire. The body was left in the cupboard for four days and then the three of them buried Karen. Idris Ali barrage of versions didn't end with his interviews. While in jail, waiting for a shower, a police officer overheard Idris telling two other inmates Alan had made him do it. Another officer said Idris asked him where Alan was because he was afraid Alan would kill him. It was all Alan's fault. He made him do it. Another officer stated he told Idris he would feel better if he had some sleep. Idris told him he would never feel better. He had been forced to strangle Karen. Idris was examined and Idris said that Alan had beaten Karen unconscious for refusing to strip her photos and had sex with her. Karen wanted to press charges. Alan forced Idris to strangle Karen. Another officer stated Idris told him Alan forced him to kill Karen. In the midst of all the interviews, the police wanted Dee to attend an identification line. However, she preferred a confrontation. Dee and Idris were brought together. Idris identified Dee, but Dee didn't identify him. During trial, Dee denied making up a story to match Idris' version. Despite Idris' several versions, Dee asserted she didn't attend a blue film party. She didn't tell Idris Karen was being kept captive. She didn't help bury the body four days later and she didn't have seen Alan strangle Karen. Alan Chartle denied knowing Karen, D or Idris Ali. However, a friend of Idris' brother contacted the police and offered information of an admission Alan made in prison. Alan allegedly stated Karen was assaulted and he strangled her in Idris' presence. Dee's version of events matched the details on how Karen was found. Also, her body was found close to Alan's basement flat. On February 26, 1991, both Alan and Idris were found guilty of murder and sentenced to life in prison. Alan Charlton had a minimum sentence of 15 years. He appealed his conviction, but it was dismissed. Idris Ali's conviction was overturned. Two psychologists stated Idris had borderline mental handicap. The judge accepted this statement and there was a new trial. Then Idris pled guilty to manslaughter and he was set free. 
because of time served. He was sentenced to six years, and because of time served, he was released in 1994. He later stated he pled guilty just because he wanted to go home. Idris Ali lived in fear of Alan and was afraid of being implicated in Karen's death. On February 15, 1990, he saw a show about Karen's death. He contacted the police and told them the remains were of Karen Price. One thing was certain on that day in July 1981, something bad happened. Karen was a victim of a brutal attack. D was lucky to come out of it alive. Karen's short life was of suffering. She never had a chance. Vindication for her brutal murder was in fact her biggest achievement. Karen Price was just 15 years old.